Hi, I'm Sarah from Jimmy Beans Wool, and today we're gonna go over everything you need to know for seaming together all 25 blocks of the Cascade Yarns Knitterati Diagonal Afghan. All right, so let's take a look at this. Look at all of these blocks that we've done. Um, this is our very last video for the Knitterati diagonal afghan. So we've got 25 blocks here um, and our next job is to seam them together and add a border on the edge. So let's go ahead and get started putting this all together. The first thing I'm going to do is refer to the diagram um, in the PDF from Cascade that has assembly instructions. In that diagram you'll see the order that all 25 of your blocks will go in um, and that'll be how you create that gradient. Um, I'm sure that you have tried it out and put it together and you cannot ultimately put these blocks in any order you like, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and follow the diagram. So I'm gonna start with this block that I have on top here, which is block 12. Um, this block is the very center of your afghan. And then I'm also gonna grab block 11, which is gonna go directly to the left of it. So let me go ahead and get everything else out of the way because we're only gonna really be working with two blocks at a time. So what you wanna do is line up the blocks how they're supposed to go. So you wanna make sure you have the right sides facing up and you have the bind off edge, or at least whatever edge you want to be the very top. In this case, I've got the bind off edge on both of these blocks lined up to the top as well. So on the final version of my blanket, this is how they're gonna look right next to each other. So what you wanna do to go ahead and get started is grab your crochet hook. The pattern calls for um, a G slash six, which is a four millimeter crochet hook. And I am going to first sandwich my two blocks together with the right sides facing in. And I'm gonna line up this seam along the slipped stitch edge that we created when we were knitting these blocks. So we can see our slipped stitches here and here. Um, you may find that one of your blocks is a little bit taller or has more slip stitches along the edges, what have you. Um, so you do wanna make sure that you've blocked each of your blocks before you get started. And then it's not crucial that there's the same number of slip stitches um, on any edge. That is gonna be totally kind of impossible unless you were very, very careful from the beginning. But all of the patterns do have a different number of rows, um, or at least some of them do. And you may have altered that based on your gauge or what have you. So it doesn't matter that the slip stitches match up one to one. It matters that the length of the blocks matches. So you're gonna be careful to make sure that you've got the centers matching up and the edge matching up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my crochet hook and my yarn. For this video, I'm gonna seam this together with a white yarn so that you can see the contrast a little better. But what you wanna do for your blocks is pick the darker color. I would recommend going with the darker color um, and using that to seam the blocks together because that will be a little bit more invisible on the back side of your blanket when you're done. Whereas if you do a light color, it will stand out a lot more. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna just wrap my yarn around my hand so I can tension it appropriately. And then leave myself a little bit of a tail so that I'm not pulling that first stitch through all the way. Then what I'm gonna do is identify the first slipped stitch on either end of both of my blocks. And I'm going to insert my crochet hook directly through that slipped stitch. So I wanna grab both sides of it, and then I wanna do the same thing on the second block. So I've put my crochet hook very securely through both of these slip stitches. Then I'm just going to yarn over on my crochet hook and pull the loop all the way through. And in your pattern, in the assembly PDF, it refers to both thicknesses, pulling your loop through both thicknesses. What they mean is through everything that you inserted so that your yarn is coming 
back out the exact way it went into your blanket. So that's the first step. The next step is to enter into the next slip stitch or the next section on both of your blocks, yarn over, pull a loop through, and then pull that loop through the first one. So you just have one left. So let's go ahead and do that again. I'm going to insert into the next set of slipped stitches, yarn over on my crochet hook, pull through, and pull through the loop on the hook. So this is how you're going to proceed with seaming the two blocks together. You're going to just repeat that step of inserting your hook, yarning over and pulling through, and then pulling through the, the loop left on your hook. And you want to make sure that you're maintaining a good tension while you're doing this. Not too tight, but snug, because that's going to determine how tightly your blocks are sewn together. So what I'm going to do is zip this all the way up and then come back and show you how that looks on the wrong side and on the right side. Okay, so I'm coming to the very last couple of stitches right here on the edge of my blanket. So I'm just going to crochet those two together using a slip stitch, just like with everything else. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn. And to finish this off, I'll just yarn over one last time and pull that loop all the way through. And if you pull that snug, it creates a nice little knot. So let's go ahead and show you what that seam looks like. So you can see mine because it's white right here, but if you use one of the blanket colors, it'll blend in pretty seamlessly. And it just looks like a row of stitches, of slip stitches that you have added onto this little sandwich. So we've got our slip stitches from one uh, block and our slip stitches from another block sandwiched together with this chain stitch you just made. And then on the uh, other side is just a little set of loops looking as though you've sewn it together. And this is the wrong side. So if we flip it over to the right side, you'll see a nearly invisible seam. If this were not in a contrast color, it wouldn't look like anything. You would just see your darker color meeting and making a clean edge. So you can see there's just a nice row of crochet slip stitches in between your two blocks. So what you're going to do is you're going to follow that same process of sandwiching the right sides together and then stitching with your crochet hook all the way across. I would recommend making your either rows or columns of five and then going up and doing the strips of five all together at once so that you've got one big solid blanket. And then once you have successfully uh, seamed your whole blanket together, go ahead and block it to the dimensions um, that you desire so that each of your blocks are squares and you've got a nice flat edge to begin doing the border with. So let me go ahead and grab some stuff for the border and I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the border. Um, for this, we're going back to knitting, so you're gonna need a 40 inch circular crochet hook, um, not because you'll be working in the round, but to accommodate the large number of stitches that you're gonna be picking up and knitting. So what you'll do is once your final blanket is assembled, I've just got these here to demonstrate, you're going to move along the outer edge of your blanket, doing one side at a time. And to begin, you're going to pick up and knit 45 stitches along the bottom edge of each of the five blocks. So you will have the same number of stitches that you pick up and knit for each block. And you can do this um, pretty indiscriminately, or what I would recommend doing rather than just going for it is breaking out your removable stitch markers. 
I have some here that are locking stitch markers, but any removable stitch marker will do. And counting along your edge to make sure you're picking up an even number of stitches as you go. So um, I would just block it out and do, say, oh, a good number. You know by your halfway point you're going to need. This will be your stitch number 23. Or you could mark it out every five stitches that you need to pick up needs to traverse X amount of stitches or X amount of distance on the bottom of the thing. So how do you pick up and knit stitches? First, I'm gonna go ahead and grab your yarn. And then all you need to do is insert your needle into the bottom of the block, just like we were doing with our crochet hook, yarn over and pull through. You wanna make sure your yarn is in the back of your work, just like you were knitting normally. And then you can zip right along and pick up the number of stitches that you need. So for this first side on the bottom of the block, you'll pick up 45 stitches on each of the five blocks as you're going across. And then you're gonna knit six rows. So this is just a garter stitch border, very simple. And then you'll bind that off. Then what you'll do is pick up five stitches from that garter stitch border you did on one end. So you'll pick up five stitches going this way and then pick up 45 stitches for each of the five blocks on the next side of your blanket. So you will then do the same thing, knit your six rows and bind off. And then you'll have a border on this side You'll pick up five stitches along this edge, 45 stitches on each of the five blocks across the top of your blanket, knit six rows, bind off, and then finally you'll move over to the last side of the border, pick up your five stitches, knit or pick up and knit 45 stitches for each block, knit six rows, and bind off. And there you have it, folks. You'll have a finished blanket. All right, so that was everything you need to know for putting together your own Knitterati Diagonal Afghan. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below, and we would love to hear from you and how your blankets turned out. We'll see you again, hopefully sometime soon, maybe for the next Knitterati. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing because we have a lot more yarn reviews, tutorials, and other fiber fun like that. Happy crafting!